The recent governorship election in Anambra State exposed another ugly development in our voting pattern, that vote buying. Of course, it's not new. After the Malays secured its baptism in Edo State, the style is you collect money ranging from 1,000 to 5,000 Naira to sell your conscience and your future. Vote buying is now part of election irregularities in Nigeria, and this is worrisome. Before this trend, we were talking about things like stomach infrastructure, empty promises at campaign rallies, and more. Across the country, this trend of vote buying is being condemned in strong terms. Some questions are therefore springing up. What led to this? At what point did we start getting it wrong? Many questions begging for answers. After that, we'll go beyond the shores of Nigeria and discuss a little about Zimbabwe. What are the lessons to be learned from the sit tight posture of former President Mugabe? Was he another Samson brought down by a Delilah? What can we learn from the coup format and more? You're welcome to Clearview. To do justice to these two issues is Shield Wazurahu. Shield, of course, is head of mission, that is Nigeria, leadership and accountability initiative. Shield, you welcome to the program. Thank you very much. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. The program is Clearview, and of course, it's a midweek program at 6 p.m. on AIT. We are looking at the twin issue of post election in Anambra State and the post-coup situation in Zimbabwe. And like I did say, to do justice to this is Shield Nwazura, who, who is head of Mission Nigeria Leadership and Accountability Initiative. Shield, you were in Anambra State for the election. You've had a lot. Some people will say, all right, the election was free and fair. But of course, you must know that some people will still come up with some other issues, other, other points that will counter what some people are saying positively. But you were there as an observer. So in a nutshell, how will you describe the Anambra election? It was free, but it was not fair. Okay. It was free in the sense that people were allowed to vote, but it was not fair in the sense that if you didn't have money, you were a loser. Because I'm telling you most sincerely, like you said, there's a dangerous trend mm. that has just been established in Anambra. Coincidentally, that is my state. So I was fully on ground. I witnessed days before the election. I saw what was going on. On the election day, I moved around so many polling booths to actually have first-hand experience what has been going on. I have monitored elections since um, President Buhari came on board. Every single election that have been conducted from Rivers to um, Ondo, mm -hmm. all the elections that have been conducted at Mon Anambra Zone was an eyesore. It was a peaceful election, no doubt. But it is no longer an election about you being popular, you being friendly, with um, you coming up with friendly policies for the people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. The, the danger that I saw is that if Abubakar Shekau, the Boko Haram commander, yeah. was on that ballot and he had money, he would have become the governor of Anambra. That's a very dangerous thing to happen to any society. If I, I would say you be not now bought his way through. Yes, he did. I witnessed. I witnessed the election. They were sharing money. I'm not. This is not. This. I, in fact, I called the election observer in one of the polling unit and I said, "Are you recording this mess?" As in, are you? They said it. The the report of the election monitoring team. They actually made it public. We can't go on like this. People are hungry because in the last few years, it seems things have become so terrible that people just want to survive. Mm. The night before the elections, um, so many communities called their villagers into their different halls in Anambra to share 5500. So they will already tell you this is the party you are going to vote for. I don't have a problem with Anubia not winning election. It's, it's, if he has done the work, fine, fantastic. But I have a problem with us setting a trend that might actually swallow all of us tomorrow. Because if an umbrella comes up tomorrow and he has the money, and that is why we keep telling government, you need to start implementing policies and programs that will make your people comfortable, mm. that will make them 
okay. Yes. Someone like me, I cannot come to a polling booth and you're offering me money to vote for you. That would be an insult. It can happen to you. It can happen to a lot of people that you know. But in the villages, in fact, if you ask the candidates in this election, in this last Adambra election, mm. they will have bitter experience. The reason why PDP came third was because they didn't spend money. The reason why APC came second was because they had money to spend. The reason why Obiano won was because he engaged the, the uh, PGs, president generals of all the communities in Anambra. So his own money was properly channeled to go to the voters. The other parties didn't have that kind of structure to work with. So you had PGs in all the communities in Anambra having direct access to the governor, having to be able to help the governor to pass across his message to the people. And I mean financial inducement. And they were, it was so brazen. It was, we we're, were destroying the fabric. The only power that the masses have, mm. which is the power of their vote, yes. we are gradually taking that power away from them with hunger. A man who has not eaten for two days, three days, you're giving him 3,000. He will we'll vote for the devil. He happened in Ondo. I monitored Ondo very well. He happened in Ondo. Ondo was for 4,000 naira. A lot of parties gave. And this one, all the parties are culpable. In Anambra, all the parties are... It was only UPP. Everywhere that I went, I never saw UPP giving money. Every other party was culpable. And I will speak... Because <laughs> if this trend continues, 2019 is going to be very dangerous. Extremely, extremely dangerous. Because Anambra people were able to uh, uh, manage it because, okay, there's relative security in the state. So imagine that it was a state that was, that was volatile. People will carry guns to the polling booths. We can't, we, can't, we can't do this. And it's not enough to complain about it. Um, our organization did a memo which was sending to INEC and relevant security agencies that something, even to the National Assembly, this must stop. This, anyone seen sharing money at any polling booth must be prosecuted as an electoral foster criminal because it defeats every logic. It, de it defeats common sense that you will come to the polling booth carrying bags of mm. cash to buy votes. I mean, that's the only thing the, the citizen have. I would ask, was it too hot for security agents to handle? Funny enough. Or were the agents even collecting money? Funny enough. <laughs> in one of the polling booths, one of the polling units, the security agencies were mocking party officials. After when I go saying that we the Kolero Pass. It was that bad. It was that it was an emotional moment for me, but as a, as a nation, as a country, I think we are in a serious mess. Uh, 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 something needs to be done to stop this immediately. And INEC has a serious role to play. The security agencies, even INEC officials who are sent to, to go and officiate yeah. these um, election processes and everything, do they pay their accommodation? Because I know what happened in Anambra. I have records of a lot of things that happened in Anambra. Who pays for the accommodation? You cannot leave these youth coppers. You cannot leave these men who are in foreign lands in the hands of politicians. If we don't clean up the system, it's not whoever wants to win should win. If we don't clean up this system, this that I just started in Anambra, we will get to a stage where someone will be in power and wouldn't mind what he does. Because yeah. on knows. election day, it's just about opening CBN or opening NNPC and bringing the money out. We cannot afford to go that route. We don't, we can't afford it. Before it used to be ballot snatching. There was no ballot yeah, snatching no in Anambra. Pure sale. It was, a, it was a trade, commercial trade in Anambra. So when they say, Obi are not one because I say, leave the issue of it was popular. If Obiano didn't spend, if he didn't overspend other parties, he would have lost. So the mandate in Anambra wasn't about popularity or friendliness with the populace or the voters. It was about ability to outspend the other. And INEC needs to stop. We can't say security agencies. Okay. We cannot say security agencies because 
What, how, many would they do? how many would they arrest? Who do you want to arrest? There are four people in the polling booth, and then they call the voters to the back, and then you're giving them 3,000, go and vote for PDP, or go vote for APC, or vote for Labour Party, or vote for this. And uh, how many can you cover? Negotiation. You understand? Okay. Okay. And it is so bad. It is so bad that in this last Anambra election, there were over 50 video videos in public of people sharing money. Nobody is surprised anymore. I mean, we, we are losing. We saw it, it's now become like it's a normal like an thing. thing. The normal thing. But we can't. Mm. Now, we have, we have uh, INEC, we have National Reorientation Agency, we have media houses, we have organizations, even like Leadership and Accountability Initiative. If these organizations have gone to the extent of probably hyping the fact that, yes, you can collect money and still vote according no, to your conscience. No, you must, think that would have worked? No, 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 no. If we do that, then we don't have, if we encourage anyone to collect, to collect money, money, we have already gone, uh, we have gone to the other side. What we need to do, because once this has started, it won't stop. You trust politicians. Yeah, of course. Politicians, now that people are piling money. That is the danger in the trend. They would, yes, they will tell you, oh, did you see what happened in Anambra? Just bring money. It started in Ondo. Ondo own was, I saw um, some people coming with rice in um, a sachet bag, little sachet bag. They will have rice, they will have granite oil, they will have maggi. Used to be stomach infrastructure. You understand what I'm saying? We thought it was going to stop. Anambra was braised, it was broad daylight trade. It was not an election. It was bring your voter's card, I'll give you cash. It was nothing. People were not, it was not an election. It was a business uh, 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 exercise. Now, you ask that if uh, National Registration Agency and the rest do it, it's a, it's a good thing. But will they give people food after those ones go to vote their elections? I think it's about and the they, government. And, and the people need food. And the people need food. The truth is, you can't tell an hungry man to reason properly. Mm. It's <laughs> not possible. <laughs> an hungry man will reason hungrily. Yes. And the hunger is just too much. People were, five, 500 people were kept for eight hours in Anambra. Eight hours in, from morning to night, mm. just for them to be able to share 500 naira, to be able to vote a particular candidate the next day. 500 naira. Mm. So if there is anything, you know, um, from the beginning of the year, uh, last year, we're hearing things like, oh, uh, poverty and hunger is being used as a political tool. But, but it's becoming real. It's actually becoming something we can see. Yes. Because if people are dying of hunger, you cannot tell them. They will vote Shekau. As long as he's ready to spend as it. Far as, as long as he's ready to give them the money. Now, imagine the danger in this. Um, I would not ask you that what does this portend for uh, 2019? We, we, the answer is, of course, uh, is, is, is there. Now, do you foresee a, a way out? Is this a problem of leadership? Is it a problem? If you say problem of leadership, then, well, issue of hunger, issue of welfare. Do you have an idea of the way out? The way out is for um, the next election that is coming up, the next major election, which is a kitty. The kitty. Must be used as a test run to teach people lessons. But that, is only, that can only happen if the, even the leaders are not thinking about 2019. The people who make the arrest, the IG of police, yes. the DG, the DSS, yes. the people who make the arrest, if they are not thinking of retaining their seats or doing whatever in 2019, that is the only time they can do it. But if it is what we are seeing now, believe me sincerely, unless something gives, unless something gives, I don't see anything changing as we go. I'm trying to be very realistic. I don't see anything changing going into 2019. But it can happen. You see, in the Anambra election, a lot of recordings were made. There are so many records of what really happened in Anambra, we can put those records out in public. We can <laughs> shame people. We can shame people. We can force the hands of security agencies to make arrests and follow it up with prosecutions. We can actually do that. But is INEC ready? How do you send people to different states and not cater 
for their accommodation and whatever, and then you're leaving them to some PGs, President Generals of Community, who will not put them in a hotel. How do I put you in a hotel, give you good accommodation and food, and you come the next day and say you wouldn't work for but them? But you do get information that the ad hoc staff or the, the, the NYC people were not adequately I'll, I'll make for. the Another thing is, I never could actually have made arrangements yes. for the accommodation, but the greed. Now, the issue is, how do we ensure through our actions, that an INEC staff will find it impossible to compromise himself or herself. Because it's about institutions checkmating each, each other. So what going into 2019, in fact, with starting with the Kitty election, because another thing is, if you look at the nature of a Kitty state politically, it is naturally volatile because mm. of the stance of the governor uh, um, against the current um, Minister. federal government. Yeah. So there might be need for proper orientation. Yes, we will do that. But beyond that, the security agencies have to stand out, stand away from partisanship. You are not security agency for APC. You are not security agency for PDP. You, you are that security you agency that for Nigeria. Possible? In fact, that is the main problem. You think it will be possible? It, it is possible. But I don't see it happening with this current set of security leaders that we have. <laughs> but that is the only way for security agencies to gain their respect from every politician, including the president. Including the president. There was an IG, Suleiman or whatever, um, the IG under Jonathan, who did something that was very dramatic. I think he followed Buhari to President Buhari to INEC. He did something that he wanted to show that he was, he was independent of government. And he was relieved of his duty. Mm. You understand it. If security agencies can go beyond this familiarity with politicians, they can actually bring sanity back to our electoral uh, system. Because INEC, I do not see this INEC being able to being able to enforce discipline. Mm. They are not security agencies. So even if they catch you sharing money, what are they going to do? If they see you sharing money, there's nothing INEC can do. Mm. Nothing. Yes. It is the job of the security agencies to checkmate this. And it is our job as civil society people, it is our job as the media to put this on the front burner. It's about saving Nigeria. It's not, this is not about any party. Yeah. Because we'll get to a stage where a president will come, it wouldn't mind Onga killing everybody in Nigeria. We'll tell you during the election day, I'll go and share money. But if we return back power to the voter, let him understand that your voter's card is power. If we return back the sanctity of the voter's card to the voter, a president will watch his back. Mm. Knowing fully well that what happened to Jonathan can happen, can happen, to, happen to anybody. But mm. the way it is today, what happened to Jonathan cannot happen to anybody. If, if the voter, if the average voter had this kind of mentality under Jonathan, Jonathan would have won. Because APC did not overspend. They did not um, uh, outspend the PDP. Mm -hmm. Today, it is about money because the populace, they are hungry. Yes, and devastated. Now, what is the place of the National Assembly? I want us to quickly discuss that before we move to the It's Bible. to check the Electoral Act, check the ones that can be amended. I know there are punishments for electoral malfeasance and uh, what have you, but the, 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 how do you enforce them? There should, be, there, sh there should be laws that are created to ensure that it is practically impossible for you to come to the uh, polling booth or polling unit carrying bags of cash or sharing money. There should be a particular act to take care of that. This particular thing needs to be checkmated now before it blossoms fully. Because what you will have is people doing whatever they need to do to get money for the election day. Every polling booth in Anambra, with the exception of none, hmm. every polling booth including the pulling booth in front of the governor's house, in front of the, all the content that every pulling booth had people sharing money. So it, it was not a hidden... It, it is that bad. So imagine how much the governor or anybody would have spent. 4,000 per voter. 3,000 per voter. You have 200 and something thousand voter, or you have 300,000 voter. In 2019, we're going to have um, um, about 30 million voters. Imagine 4,000. So which good person will have that kind of money to spend and come and then you tell him that good road is his priority? 
Well, uh, maybe maybe it's not uh, really a big deal. Maybe it's a, it's a continental problem because when uh, Mugabe was removed, there was joy all over the land. But then some analysts were saying, 37 years, this man passed through some election stages. Mm. He was being voted in and he was booted out of office mm. and people were jubilating. Then you will mm. ask, mm. who have been voting for Mugabe? The issue is the same military that has been helping him to change the constitution of that country. To suit him. To suit him. We wanted to have that in Nigeria, we taught him. Somebody yeah. wanted to create a third term in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. Thank God for the National Assembly that shut it down. So, yes, it's an African problem. Leaders who don't see the essence or the responsibility that leadership actually places on them. If we didn't have a National Assembly then that was vocal, that knew its responsibility and its onions, we would have had a third term and probably a fourth term and probably a fifth term. It's the same thing that happened. Mugabe was never president illegally. Mm -hmm. Every day he spent as president was legal. Yes. Was covered by the constitution. Yes. Now, what you will ask is, what happened to that Mugabe of 1980? The man yes. whose first speech at the United Nations still resonates till today. today. The man who had Bob Marley go sing for him on the day of his inauguration. What happened to Mugabe? When, why, how did Along he transform the line. from being the, the vibrant leader, an icon, and someone that the world looked up to? To becoming a 90 something year old man who still wanted to remain in power what did he fight for then if it was about liberation yes we had a mandela we had a nelson mandela who said i cannot do more than one time we had that nelson mandela and after that we've not had another one apart from president jonathan good luck jonathan we've not had another one and whoever well, the issue of uh, uh, Zimbabwe, the military cannot deceive those who are smart and intelligent. They've been the one helping him to hold on to power. They've been the one helping him to do what, arrest whoever needed to be arrested, mm. shut down whoever needed to be shut down. Do, they've been the one keeping Mugabe for 37 years until he had problems with his deputy. And Mugabe must have been doing that illegally. He must, <laughs> oh, definitely. So it is the same military now who have shown him the way out. It is the same military who have helped bring in another president who will still keep the... Zimbabwe is not yet free. Let me be on record as saying that. Until power returns to the people to decide their own leaders, that country is not yet free. I think the party Zanu PF decided the next... has decided the new the president country. now. Yeah. Yes, they have. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's his record? Mm. That, that's another thing we should look at. Africa needs to have the Obamas. Africa needs to have the Macrons. This continent is not short of intelligent, smart, upwardly mobile young people. Look at Nigeria. Most likely the election of 2019 will be between a 71-year-old, 73-year-old man and an almost 80-year-old man. Most likely. I'm painting a scenario that might likely happen. We may not have anybody younger than 60. So, are we, we can move forward with the ideas of 20 decades ago. We can't move forward. That is why after we gained independence in 1960, this is 2017. That's how many years now? Hmm. That's... Um, Over 40 years now. Over 57, years, 57 years now, years. we have not produced 5,000 megawatts of power. 57 years. A, do you understand what I'm, I, I want to look at it because if you say oh, between the last 70 years you think you've been talking about PDP or APC, I'm not interested in those pedestrian talks. The bigger picture is that the leaders Nigerians, Nigeria has, uh, has had 57 years, we cannot produce 5,000 megawatts of power. They should be phased out. New bloods who understand that without power, Without power, a nation is talk. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who should come on board. And nobody is coming up against 2019. The young people in this country, the young element of Nigeria, need to take their own destiny. I see a 90-year-old man in Zimbabwe. I am scared. Today in Nigeria, I'm seeing Atiku will be 73 in 2011. Buari will be almost 80 in 2019. Atiku will be 73 in 2019. 
these are con between these two people. What is the best that they can offer? And let's say Atiku does not make it in 2019, 2023, he'll be like 70. <laughs> 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 well, that will be all on this week's edition of uh, Clear View. What we've been trying to do is to look at uh, the recent governorship election in Anambra State. Of course, matters arising from the election. I were able to get one of the observers. Uh, he was actually on, on ground. And we now related that to what is going on now with Nanagua as the new president of uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, Shield Wazra, who has been my guest, Shield, thank you very much for finding time to come thank at a short so notice. Much. Thank you so much. Thank sir. you. Shield, as I did introduce him at the beginning of the program, is the head of mission, Nigeria Leadership and Accountability Initiative. Next week, Wednesday, 6 p.m., we hope you want to join us again. I am Ojiambelo. Bye for now. <laughs>